going to have our lecture in here tonight, more so a working lecture while we are having our light meal uh, and having this informative uh, and, and powerful and impactful uh, lecture, uh, something that is important for each and every one of us, something that I believe also is expansive because oftentimes we think that we're limited to just that of what we have, but we forget that what we have in many instances can lead to so much more and it can not only benefit us, not only benefit our family, but it also has the ability to uh, actually benefit the communities in where we are, where we work, where we worship, right? Uh, and so I wanted to bring uh, this gentleman here. This is uh, Mr. Mike Lee. Uh, he is the founder of the 501C8 Initiative Impact. This session is talking about uh, leveraging, uh, leveraging your wealth, leveraging that of what you have uh, so that you can do so much more. Uh, you can do so much more. And, and I make it no secret. I make no bones about it. Uh, persons, uh, our uh, hue, uh, skin color uh, need to do more. We need to be more impactful. And we often forget just how far and how powerful our dollar is. But can I tell you, the world never forgets and they have never forgotten and they are still uh, benefiting off of our dollar. And guess what? We should, we should too. Amen. And so uh, if you could just uh, praise the Lord with me, we're going to bring up uh, Brother Lee. Uh, I did a halfway introduction. He'll do a better, uh, far better introduction of himself. I pray that you will sit, not just in your tent doors, but you will pull out your pen, your pencil. This is information that you need. This is information that you also need to share. Amen. Uh, Mr. Lee. All right. 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 So first thing I'm going to tell y'all is I love y'all. Okay. Straight up. I love y'all. Okay. Um, my career path at this point, I travel the country. I do a lot of public speaking. I talk to a lot of large nonprofit organizations. I've done a lot of work with the Susan G. Coleman Race for the Cure. The epilepsy walk, the walk for AIDS, the walk for the homeless, some of these nonprofit organizations that have millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of resources. I go into a lot of churches across the country. Literally tomorrow, I'm flying to Tampa to meet Coach Hugh Jackson. I don't know if any of y'all are football fans, but he was a football coach here in D.C. for a while. I'm meeting him to talk to him about this exact same information that I'm talking to you guys about because he wants this information in his church. He wants this information in his community into the corners of his community where people have forgotten about us, right? The unheard parts of our communities, okay? Again, my name is Mike Lee and I'll tell y'all straight up, I'm family, I'm your friend, I'm your favorite nephew, I'm your favorite cousin, the one who did everything he was supposed to do, the one who ain't got in too much trouble, you ain't have to bail him out of nothing. <laughs> you know, I'm the one who went to college, got good grades, tried to do everything the right way. Okay, and this is the product of that. Now, I also tell you this about my background. I'm from the church. I'm a PK. Both of my parents were preachers. My dad, uh, unfortunately, passed from COVID um, during that time frame. But my mom is still preaching to this day. I've watched them build churches. I've watched them serve the community. I've watched them pick up homeless people off the streets. I, I dealt with that a lot when I was a kid. My parents would pick up the homeless kids. I got to scoot on over. You know, I didn't understand it as a child. But I say all this to say my heart and my life is service. It's to serve our people. With all the traveling that I do, it always feel good to come back home. Right here to the church. Okay. Now, one thing that I noticed about this church, and I've been in a lot of churches talking about this information, is y'all are a family. Okay, there's a difference between joining a church and belonging to something, right? People don't want to join things. People want to belong to things. So number one, I want to thank Pastor Blue for the hospitality. And number two, I want to thank you guys for your time, your energy, and your effort. Now, with that being said, why am I here? Let me ask you guys, how many of you guys have heard of a 501c3 entity? 
501c3s. Our churches, our schools, our charitable organizations, those companies, those organizations are listed as 501c3 entities, simply meaning that they have a tax break because they are here to serve, okay? We're sitting in a 501c3 entity right now, the church, okay? Now, when we hear 501c3, a lot of us don't realize that that three in 501c3 is simply a type. There's actually 29 different 501c categories that people set their businesses up in so they can have a tax break because they're serving the community, because they're helping out people. But there's 29 different categories. Okay, now let's get to the basics. A 501c1 is a not-for-profit bank. Y'all call them federal credit unions. So we all know if you're going to buy a house, if you're going to buy a car, go ahead and establish a good relationship with a good, with a credit union. Navy Fed, Apple Fed, Andrew, establish a good relationship with a credit union because they got the lowest fees, they got the best interest rates, they got the new home buyer seminar, they have programs that their members can access simply because they're members. It doesn't matter if somebody has $25 in their bank account or $250,000 in their bank account. If you're Navy Fed, you're Navy Fed, okay? Now, that's a not-for-profit bank. The difference, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, you can go buy Bank of America and Wells Fargo stock right now, right? They have shareholders to appease. They do advertisements. But if you go down the street to Navy Fed, you're not buying Navy Federal Credit Union stocks. They are for the people not for the profit. Do they make money? Absolutely. But they're for the people, not for the profit. Okay. That's a 501c1. I don't deal with 501c1s. I just know everybody got a bank. Everybody at least knows what a bank is. Okay. The exact same thing is happening in the life insurance industry. They're considered 501c8 entities. 501c8s. Okay. And it works the exact same way. You have for-profit life insurance companies. We call them life insurance companies, right? State Farm, MetLife, New York Life. There are thousands and thousands of for-profit insurance companies out there. And to be honest with you, a lot of them are overpriced. They pay tens of millions of dollars so we can remember their slogans. Like a good neighbor, y'all know the rest. You hear me? Are we? Are you in good hands? I don't. Nobody knows that dude's name. We know he was in waiting to exhale. I don't know his name. <laughs> we all know who he is. He one of us. So they pay tens of millions of dollars for us to remember their names, to remember their slogans. However, on the not for profit side, they don't advertise. That's why y'all ain't never heard of this. Okay, it ain't that y'all ain't paying attention. It ain't that y'all ain't got your ear to the ground. It's just they don't advertise. The only way that you hear about this stuff is word of mouth. Now, with that being said, I will tell you that these programs that I'm going to be talking about has been around for over 100 years. And it frustrates me every single time that I mention it because nobody's in a rush to come into our communities, come into the places where people look like us and tell us about this laundry list of programs that we can be accessing. OK, so number one, 501c8 not for profit life insurance companies are cheaper than the big name companies that we hear about. Number two, just like in the banking industry, they come with a bunch of programs, but it's not good fees, good interest rates. It's not that. It is literally things that we can be taking advantage of today. For example, they have an extensive scholarship program. How many of us got kids or grandkids? Okay, all of us. Kids or grandkids. I got a five-year-old and a two-year-old. They're cute as all, cute as all day. OK, but for those of us that have kids that want to go to college, they give away over 300 scholarships every single year. Now, all of us are on the same page, going to Google, fishing in the same pond, trying to figure out how do we get these scholarships? Senior 2024, senior 2025, while over here, they give away over 300, 355 scholarships to be exact. And they're not rinky dink. They're $2,500 each and you can get them renewed. OK, they have a program where you can get grant money. OK, there's three different grants that they offer you. 
And again, it don't matter how big or small somebody's life insurance policy is. I love the people who already have life insurance. What I'm going to tell you right now is you're probably overpaying. Straight up. Most likely you're overpaying. It is what it is. These life insurance companies, they get better just like these cell phones. So if you got an old Lincoln Heritage policy, if you got an old Primerica policy, Colonial Pen or whatever it is, you're probably overpaying. It is what it is. Okay. These grants that they have, you can get two grants to $200, right? Two grants to $200 to do something small in the community. We do a lot of book bag drives, coat drives. We do a lot of feeding the homeless. I do a lot of work down at the Covenant House down here. Um, all types of things that you can do. Helping a family that's in need. It's $200 twice a year. Literally no red tape. It takes you five minutes to apply for it. Okay? We go into to these YMCAs and we buy basketballs and toys and stuff like that. They have a second grant called the Community Grant where you can access $2,000 twice a year twice a year you know where a lot of people put that money back into the ministry you know how the church does toys for tots feeding the homeless they got the you know um things during the christmas time you got the book bag jobs all these initiatives that people have we can actually be taking this money and going right back into the church i can name church after church after church across the country that have their members their leaders actually using this information and getting this, getting this stuff back into the community. We got people that will do a book bag drive in the community. They'll invite everybody down in the community. Okay. And y'all come on down, get these book bags. We're going to have some music. We're going to have some food. Y'all know how y'all do it, yep. right? We've been doing this for years. Y'all don't have to pay for it. It ain't got to come out of your own back pocket. And the church ain't got to pay for it every single time. They can get some help. That's what we're here for. We are the church. Not he is the church. We are the church. So we all got to donate. We all got to do our parts. Okay. So a $200 grant that you can get twice a year, a $2,000 grant that you can get twice a year. And then they have another grant called a fun family grant, where if you wanted to do something with your kids, your grandkids, you want to go down to Six Flags, you want to go to the amusement park, you want to go to um, the zoo or the aquarium or to the movies, you can do that for free. Okay. Now, let me explain something to y'all. There is a huge difference between price and value. Huge difference between price and value. Price is what you pay for something. Okay? Let's just talk about insurance since we're on the subject. $100 a month for an insurance policy. Sure. Value is what you get out of it. The reason a lot of us in the black community don't have life insurance is because we don't necessarily see the value, okay? We know that there's value. We know that it's important to have. We know that we need to be leaving a legacy and not a liability to our families. We know we don't want to leave that nasty taste in our family's mouth when we got to do a GoFundMe or fish fry. We all been here. We all adults here, okay? We all know what it looks like in our communities. We know when we got to come to the church and say, Lord, somebody passed away. Can we... Fill in the blank. We all listen. I'm telling you, people are passing away all the time. It wouldn't be surprised if somebody in y'all's community has passed away within the last month. It would not surprise me at all. Okay. We know these things, but here's the difference. When you have a policy, when you have a life insurance policy with a not-for-profit life insurance company, the value is a lot more than a for-profit policy. Because not only can you get the death benefit that you're going to get anyway, you also get scholarships. I just told you all about three different grants that you can get. They have a parental legacy program. Okay. Meaning if mom and dad passes away and think about how many times in our communities we see grandparents permanently take care of kids. There's always a story there. We're just never really sure what it is. We live in the D.C. area. Y'all know how it is out here. We're just never really sure what it is. They will give child support. $900 per month per child of child support. So if y'all got three kids, your grand, your y'all got grandkids, if something happens to y'all's children, it's going to be y'all's responsibility. My mom, she retiring next year. She ain't making more money. She making less money. So if something was to happen to me and my wife, it's going to be hard for her. You hear what I'm saying? So $900 per month per child of child support that 
you, the legal guardian, whoever that might be, will be able to access. And then once these children turn 18, that stops, but they automatically get $24,000 for school. Oh, wow. Automatically. Yes. Okay. How many of us have heard, oh, I got diabetes. It's hard to get me some life insurance. With these not-for-profit life insurance companies, it does not matter. We got a lot of people in our community that feel like they can't get life insurance because of their pre-existing condition. If somebody had cancer and their cancer three for three years, it don't matter. First day coverage. Somebody had a stroke two years ago, it don't matter. First day coverage. This is stuff that don't happen all over the place. If you have life insurance, you know that this is not normal, right? They have another program. They give away over 200. They have over 200 online courses that people can actually tap into. My personal story, I went to college and for the first two years, I studied psychology. I had no business studying, no psychology. <laughs> Look, my advisor was like, what you want to do when you graduate? I'm like, I'm trying to get to the money. What you talking about? She said, money? <laughs> I said, yeah. She said, uh-uh, you ain't doing money in psychology. You're going to have to go to school for eight more years to actually start making money. And I'm like, okay, this is not it. Why? Well, I'm a first generation college graduate. I ain't know no better. I didn't have a reference point. So imagine, think about how many of our kids are going to school in the dark. Imagine if we can get them some information and say, hey, look, here's how cybersecurity works. Here's how finance works. Health and health and wellness. All these different subjects that we can get them a head start. Maybe we're a little bit older and we want to learn how to do better on the computer. Maybe we want to learn about photography, how to cope with loss. They have over 200 courses that we can access for free. Okay. They have a program where it's a tuition reimbursement program. So think about how many of us want to go back to school, get a professional certification, right? Get a professional license, whatever it is. They have tuition reimbursement for their members. All of these things are resources that we can be accessing, resources that we need to be tapping into. They have a deals and discount club where people who buy things every day, which is all of us, you get discounts on things that you buy every day. Sam's Club is 60% off. 60% off of Sam's Club. We deal with a lot of teachers. We're in all of PG County. So if y'all are teachers, see y'all. It's good to see y'all again. We go to all the schools. Okay. 85% off Microsoft Office. Lifetime license. Right? Movies, 40% off. Rental cars, 40% off. Flights, hotels, shows. Over 2,000 different discounts. For those of y'all that don't like to cook, they got meal prep places that send you meals. I, I use one of those. 21 meals, 40% off. I mean, they got all types of discounts that we can be using. Why are we paying full price for everything? Right? They got so many different programs. And what I'm here to tell you guys is we have to leverage. Okay? Leverage. Don't disregard the point of a subject matter expert think about it if you got a problem with your car it's good to have a mechanic in your pocket mm -hmm. if you have a problem with your health it's good to have a doctor hey doc this is what's going on i need a little bit of help right so think about all of us that have life insurance who don't have life insurance who's not taking advantage of this stuff right so another thing that i want to talk about is how life insurance actually works because remember i told y'all some of y'all are overpaying all right. First things first, there's two main types of life insurance, two main types. You got term insurance and you got permanent insurance. OK, you got term insurance and you got permanent insurance. And there are pros and cons to both. So for those companies out there that say, oh, don't get that permanent insurance, you wasting your time and your money. That ain't true. And then for those other companies out there that said, oh, don't get that term insurance. Don't get that, that, that term. You wasting your time and your money. That ain't true. There's pros and cons to both. I'm teaching you guys this because people that only provide one, they're not going to tell you the other side of the coin. My job is to come in and dispel any myths when it comes to insurance. My job is to come in and bring imminent value when it comes to things that we can be doing in the community. Right? Got examples after examples of nonprofits regular people doing this stuff okay so when it comes to term insurance it is exactly like it sounds it is a term it lasts for a certain term okay after that term 
that policy either expires or the price goes way up, way up. When I'm dealing with the churches, a lot of us have the Primerica policy. I love Primerica. They're a great company, but a lot of people outlive those policies. It is what it is. They outlive the policies. Or they get to the point where instead of it being $65 a month, $100 a month, it skyrockets to $400 a month, $500 a month, and it continues to go up, $600 a month. I spoke to a pastor last weekend. I, I had this presentation a little while back. I spoke to a pastor last weekend. He has a policy that started off at $75 a month. Right now, he's paying $475 a month. And next year, if he doesn't do something, it's going to be $670 a month. I'm just telling y'all. I'm just telling y'all. Y'all are family. Okay? Is there merit? Is there reason for term life insurance? Yes. Yes. But do take into consideration that that is going to expire at some point. It's kind of like auto insurance. If I go 20 years and I never get into a car accident, they're going to say, great job being a good driver. <laughs> but if you would have gotten into an accident, we would have had you back. Term life insurance. Okay? Or the permanent side of life insurance. It is exactly like it sounds. It's permanent. So you're going to lock in a price for that insurance policy. I want y'all to start looking at life insurance differently because this is such an uncomfortable conversation with a lot of people. And I understand why I do it all the time. The reason it's so uncomfortable is because we don't want to talk about death and we don't have to talk about death. I want you to understand and I want you to flip your mindset when it comes to life insurance. Instead of looking at it as a bill, we all know about stocks. I want you to look at it as stocks. Let's say it's 100,000 units. We're going to call them units instead of dollars. Let's say it's 100,000 units. And if you get, let's just use your grandchild who's young, life insurance at a young age, then it might be $25 a month for those 100,000 units. Your child who might be older, 40s, 30s, whatever, it might be, and these are just hypothetical numbers, $50 for 100,000 units. The older you get, the more it costs for these units. But what you got to realize is this is money that is going to pass on to the next generation. This is generational wealth. Okay? Don't look at it as a bill. It's not a bill. This is generational wealth. This is, this is investing in your financial future. This is making sure your family don't have to worry about anything after you pass away. Okay? So when it comes to permanent insurance, it is what it is. It lasts all the way up until age 120. The second thing about permanent insurance is the price is never going to go up on you. And the coverage amount is never going to go down on you. So you're going to lock in a price, $25 per unit or for the units for your kids or whatever it is. The third thing is it gets what's called cash value. All right. What cash value is, it's like equity in your policy. Okay, so for every dollar that you put into it, the life insurance company might put 25 cents, 35 cents, 55 cents, 65 cents into that, into a pot, into a pocket for you, right? So you can access that money later. Okay. Why is that important? Because I'm sure I'm, some of y'all heard, oh, I'm gonna go borrow some money from my life insurance policy. That's what y'all hear. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm gonna go in that life insurance policy, get a couple grand. That is possible. Okay, you can do that. Here's another myth that I'm going to dispel for you guys. You don't have to pay the money back. So, for example, if somebody has $100,000 worth of life insurance and they go in there and they borrow $20,000, they don't have to pay that money back. It's called a forgivable loan. They're going to subtract that from the death benefit. Okay? Okay? Now, here's the thing that people don't like about the permanent insurance. It's simply that it's more expensive than the term. Sometimes it's two to three times more expensive than your term policy, but it's also guaranteed to pay out. So it's different strokes to, for different folks. And I need you guys to iron this stuff out. I'm going to give you guys some information. I want everybody to put, I want to challenge everybody to put their name on a piece of paper. I will talk to you like your family because you are about your life insurance policy. If you got a great life insurance policy, I'll be the first one to say, great job. If you don't have a good life insurance policy, I'll be the first one to say, look, you might want to make some adjustments, okay? Do not disregard the point of a subject matter expert. If your car's messed up, call your mechanic, 
Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Now, here's the other thing. There's five different reasons why people get life insurance. Most of us can only think of one. Funeral and burial, you know. <laughs> you know, what else? Uh, leave a little bit of money for my kids. Right? That's about the extent of what most people think of life insurance for. Well, we use the acronym DIMES. D I M E S. Okay? The D stands for death and final expense. Costs ten to $20,000 to die nowadays. It is what it is. We seeing it. We look. I'm at that age where some of the people that I looked up to growing up, they started to transition. You know, um, and it's 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 such a interesting time for me, and it, it allows me to reflect and realize how blessed I am to have such great people in my lives. But they're starting to transition. Okay, ten to twenty thousand dollars to die nowadays. The I stands for income replacement. Okay, so if there's somebody that depends on your income, your spouse, your 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 children, your grandchildren, when you pass away, your income passes away. This is a message for your kids. Look, y'all got this dual family household, two income family, fifty thousand dollars here, fifty thousand dollars here. Well, if one of those fifty thousand dollars die, guess what? Them bills gonna keep coming. That don't change anything. So the second reason people get life insurance is income replacement, okay? The third reason, M, stands for mortgage protection. What does that mean? I know some of y'all rent, some of y'all own, it's all good either way, but for those people that own your home, I need you to understand when you pass away, dropping that $1,500 mortgage into your family's lap ain't gonna be as sweet as y'all think it is. They got their own bills, they got their own rents, they got their own problems, they got their own emergencies. So yes, we do the right thing by going out and trying to buy a house. Let me pass this on to my kids. This is for my kids and my kids' kids. You know, We do the right thing, but we have to do it the right way. There's a right way and a wrong way to do the right and the wrong thing, okay? So how does mortgage protection work? Let me explain it to you. Let's say somebody has a $250,000 mortgage and let's say they have a 30-year loan. People have the ability to get $250,000 worth of insurance for 30 years to cover the entire mortgage, okay? I talk to a lot of real estate agents, and this is something that they don't even really know about because they go out, they make the sale, they help the family find the house, but they don't understand how to protect that investment, okay? People think that mortgage insurance is the same thing as mortgage protection. When you buy a house, the the they'll give you what's called mortgage insurance and that falls off after you pay 20% of the mortgage. That is not to protect you, family. That is to protect them. So if you default on your loan, they don't have to pay for it. It's required to get auto insurance, but it's not required to get mortgage insurance. Why? Because they don't want you to mess up your car. But if you mess up things with your house, they're fine with that $250,000 coming on right on back. Okay? So this is something that most people ain't, aren't talking about. Okay? So you have a $250,000 home, somebody can get $250,000 worth of coverage. Let's say you're older, your kids are grown and gone. You don't have to cover the entire $250,000 mortgage. Maybe your mortgage is $1,500 a month and you know your kids ain't moving back into that house, right? Y'all know they ain't moving back into that house. Maybe you just want to cover 12 months of the mortgage. $18,000. Maybe you want to cover 24 months of the mortgage, $36,000 to make sure when they, when you pass away, they don't have to leave the funeral and start making major decisions. This is common in our community. When my dad passed, I've been, I've been in this game for a long time. So we had everything straight. It was lined up. You see what I'm saying? Like, Everything was straight, but with that being said, I see it not straight so many times because I have death claims. I've had over 20 death claims at this point. Over 20. So I see what it looks like on all sides. Okay. The E stands for endowments. What is an endowment? That's what you get for your kids. Let me put fifty thousand dollars in June Bug's pocket. You know, let me put twenty-five thousand dollars in this little scholarship program that I want for my kids. Okay, you can do that. Maybe it's for charity. I see a lot, a lot, a lot of members of churches 
putting a portion of their death benefit towards the church. Look, they've been serving me for X amount of years. We're going to make sure that they got $5,000 when I pass away. We're going to make sure that they got $10,000 when I pass away. This is my legacy in this church, right? We don't, we don't realize that these are some of the things that we can be doing with the life insurance that we have and the life insurance that we don't have yet. Okay, those are called endowments. The S stands for savings and retirement. Savings and retirement. Don't y'all know that there's a lot of people who either just retired, about to retire, or want to retire that don't love the ups and downs of the stock market? Do y'all know that this is an election year? Do y'all know what that means? Have y'all been watching the stocks? Do you know that a presidential candidate can tweet out uh, Facebook is the enemy of the state and Facebook can go down further than they have for the last eight years? Do y'all realize that this is what's happening with your money? If you just retired and you got it sitting in this little bank account, it ain't doing you no good. It ain't getting no interest. So what do a lot of people do? They keep it right there in their little 401k or whatever, and it gets banged up by the market. Here's the problem that people don't understand. I'm going to use basic numbers. If you have $100,000 and the market has a 50% loss, you now have $50,000. That's easy math, right? Well, let's say the very next year, the market has a 50% gain. How much money do you have? 75000 75000 A lot of people say, oh, I got $100,000. Mm -mm. No. You don't get credit for what you had. That ain't how that works. You get, you got 50000 now. You're going to get 50% of this 50000 So now you, got, you lost $25,000 and the market went down and came right back up. You still lost $25,000. So how much money are we losing when these people decide to tweet or when the election year comes in, the market is built to correct itself every seven to eight years. Your money is doing this. That is a problem. People don't like that, especially once they get around the retirement age. Like, no, I need all of this money. I, I built this over the years. I need every single one of these pennies. There's programs. You can put your money into an annuity, right? An annuity is simply an interest-bearing account with a life insurance company. Well, why would you put it with a life insurance company? Well, because in life insurance, you cannot l legally lose a dollar. You can't lose a penny. Why? Because life insurance companies don't put their money in the market. They use the market as an index. A lot of people don't realize that it was life insurance companies that bailed us out of the Great Depression. It wasn't the banks. The banks were broke. The FDIC that's backing y'all banks, right? Y'all know, oh, your bank is backed by the FDIC. That's life insurance companies. I need y'all to understand these foundations of finance because if y'all don't understand it, what you got to understand is what you teach your children becomes their inner voice. We all did the best job that we can. My mama did the best job that she could when it came to finance, but there are some things that she just didn't know, Right? Some things that we just don't know. Nobody's in a rush to come and teach us about it. These are some of the things that we just don't know. Here's another portion of savings and retirement. Let's say you're in your mid-30s and you got a 401k that you're contributing money to. Okay? Let's just say $500 a month. Sure, whatever. That money's still getting banged up by the, by the stock market. Okay? It's going up and down. It's going up and down. You could put your money into a life insurance policy and get all the gains of the market, but none of the losses. People say, how is that even fair? Well, here's the reason. Number one, life insurance companies, again, they don't put their money in the market. Life insurance companies are the ones who buy street signs. They buy, they buy, back in the day, they used to buy the bricks to build universities. They put their money in things that ain't going nowhere. Because the way life insurance companies work is if everybody dies at the exact same time, they have enough money. They legally have to have enough money to pay out every single death claim and have enough money to restart a life insurance company. Right? So savings and retirement is another thing that we really 
need to start paying attention to. We can get our grandkids, our kids into this savings and retirement um, conversation early. My two-year-old, my five-year-old, they already have life insurance. The way that they have life insurance set up is by the time they turn 40 years old, they're going to be millionaires. I'm just telling y'all, This, I'm learning from the wealthy. I'm like Robin Hood. I'm going over here. I'm taking all this information. I'm bringing it right back to the crib. I'm bringing it right back to the crib. And I set my stuff up the exact same way. My kids will be millionaires by the time they're 40, right? Y'all can set the same thing up for your kids. It's not that expensive. It don't, it's not that deep, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, the other thing that I want to mention is when we're talking about leveraging, okay, when we're talking about leveraging, I want you to take advantage of the advantage, okay? You guys belong to an incredible community. You guys belong to an incredible community. You guys do things together, right? You guys have committees. You guys have things that you guys collectively want to do. What you need to do, what I suggest people do is obviously have some life insurance that's going to give you more than a death benefit. And I'll tell you about a couple more programs that they have, by the way. But get a life insurance that does more than provide a death benefit and get some of those resources into your church. Get some of those resources into your community. If y'all got kids and grandkids that play sports, do something for the for the football team. Do something for the basketball team. Let them know what's out here. Because the people that look like us, I'm telling y'all, 99% of us have never heard of this. Everybody in here except for Pastor Blue has never heard of this. That is a problem. That is a problem. This has been happening for over 150 years. This is not new. It's just new to us. This is not new. It is literally just new to us. Okay. Here's another program that you automatically get with having a life insurance policy with a not-for-profit life insurance company. They will write your will for free. Power of attorney, healthcare directives. Think about how many of us pass away without a will. We see it all the time. Think about how many of us don't have a will right now just because there's a price tag attached to it. $400, $300, $400 every single year. You got to get it renotarized. All these things, they'll do it for free. They'll do it for free. So these are resources, resources. I'm all about resources, education, funding. If you're somebody who has a nonprofit organization, there is nonprofit resources that you could be accessing. If you're somebody who is a leader in your community, there's resources that you could be accessing. If you're just leading your family, there's resources that we could be accessing. Okay? What I'm going to do, I'm going to pass a couple of these forms out real quick. And then I'm going to answer any specific questions. If y'all don't have any more questions, I'm going to give you a little bit more value. And we'll go from there. I challenge you guys. Like I said, I'm going to treat y'all like family. You got something? Excellent. If not, that's perfectly fine. Let's have the conversation about life insurance one time this ain't the, this ain't the labor of hey y'all you got life insurance i know how it is this ain't a, this ain't a pretty conversation <laughs> trust me i've been doing this for a long time i know this ain't the conversation to bring smiles and, and you know smiles all over the place this is the conversation that when y'all say hey look son we need to talk hey look daughter we need to talk somebody got to be the adult here that's what this conversation is thank you that's what this conversation is first things first any questions from anybody yes sir mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. You have a universal life insurance policy. That's a good thing. What that means for those people that don't know what that means, a universal life insurance policy, it establishes cash value faster than a traditional life insurance policy. OK, what they're doing is when you have a universal life insurance policy, you have the price of the policy. But what he's doing is overfunding that policy. So the policy might be one hundred dollars a month for easy numbers. If he's putting two hundred dollars a month into that policy, that extra hundred dollars 
is getting the gains of the market and none of the losses. Okay. So yes, you can absolutely use that and have it for your family, nephew, niece, whoever. Okay. So I can add more into it instead of just the minimum. You can add more for sure. You can add more 100%. So the way that we set up these policies and whoever set up yours, they probably set it up the exact same way is we give you enough wiggle room where you can add money into it. So you can get, let's say it's tax season, right? Let's say somebody gets $10,000 for taxes back. They could take 5,000 of that, put it into there. And now that $5,000 is getting the market gains. So if the market goes up 8%, you get 8%. You know, if it goes up 10%, you're getting 10%. Typically what happens is, is there's going to be a cap. That cap might be 12%. So if the market goes up 20%, you get 12%. If it goes up 30%, you get 12%. However, zero is your hero when it comes to insurance. Zero is your hero when it comes to money, when it comes to finance. When the market goes down, you don't lose any money at all. That's the big thing. When the market goes down, you don't lose any money at all. That's why people are taking this route because nobody really knows what's happening with the market. Any other questions? I got a three out. Yeah, yeah. So how long should I have? Because I'm coming up on 20. Mm -hmm. So I keep it 30, 40. You can keep it as long as you want. You keep so what we'll do, make sure you fill that out. What I do with every single body, everybody in here, just so y'all know how I work. I treat you like your family because you are. So if it makes sense for us to call up to the life insurance company and figure out exactly what you have, we will call up to the life insurance. It's a three minute wait, five minute wait. And I have seven questions that I ask to make sure we know absolutely everything that we need to know about your life insurance policy. So give me, give me a call or put your information on there. I'll give you a call. And what we'll do is we'll just call up and bro, we'll say, all right, this is how much cash value you got. If you want to stop paying for this policy because you have enough cash value where it just pays for itself, you can do that. If you want to take a year off from paying for the policy, you can do that like and more, you know. So, yeah, you got options. You got options. Any other questions? A 12 month certificate? So are you talking about the weight that some companies have? So Yeah, so they have annuities like that. Um, a lot of the credit, this is this is what I tell people about getting insurance through credit unions. You don't want to go grocery shopping at 7-Eleven. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it's a credit union. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm going to get a life insurance policy, I'm going to get it with a life insurance company. There are things in these life insurance companies that the credit union policies just won't do. For example, one of the things is a lot of these life insurance policies, it will pay you up to 75% of your coverage amount while you're still alive if you have anything major happen like a heart attack, stroke, cancer, ALS, dementia, Alzheimer's, kidney failure, renal failure, all these things. You see why I say your policies might be old and obsolete? Because if it's not doing that, it's probably old and obsolete. If you haven't already had one of these major things, then most likely you have an old and obsolete policy. You know, But there's a whole bunch of different options that you have. They got um, programs where you can put money into it for they call it the infinite banking system. It's a whole bunch of different theories out there nowadays where you could put a lump sum of money. Let's say it's $50,000 just for easy numbers, $50,000 into this um, insurance policy. Within 30 days, you'll be able to access 90% of that, right? So you'll be able to access what, 90,000 or 45,000 of that. So what people will do is they will start paying their bills with their life insurance policy, that $45,000, because when you take money out of a life insurance policy, it's not called a withdrawal, it's called a loan. And the, with a loan, what happens with a loan is this money, because it's a loan, it technically still exists, that $50,000 is getting interest. You know how we talked about that 8%, 9%, 10%, 12%? The, fifth, the whole $50,000 is getting interest while 
you're spending this money to pay your bills like you do. But this $50,000 that you originally had is continuing to get interest. It's called the infinite banking system. It's a lot of levels to life insurance. That's why I say if y'all got any questions about it, please ask because this is what I do. This is my this is my ministry. My ministry is coming in here trying to help as many black people with this information as I possibly can. Yes. Um, in regards to obsolete insurance companies, um, if, uh, is it possible to take that money and transfer it to, um, is it? It is, it's called. to uh, an insurance company that makes sense? Yeah, it's called a 1035 exchange. Mm -hmm. So if you got $10,000, $5,000 sitting in your cash value, you can exchange that money directly into your new policy. It's called a 1035 exchange. So I can take, here's a, a true example. Okay. I'm going to say, okay, I want to live about seven different policies on my seven. I only got three. <laughs> right? But I knew that this is an old insurance company that, you know, had to go on the history on it, that they were really the off black people when they were. Is it Prudential? No, United. United okay. Um, United of Omaha? Huh? United of Omaha? No. United of United of Okay. Yes. Yep. And now they're, they're yep. But um, and, and, I'm, and I'm angry the fact that on these policies on my siblings because I surely don't want to be responsible if anything you know happened to them and I and I'm feeling like all this money has a loss. But when I did the math, I'm gonna those policies back in the early 80s. Mm. So the money I'm paying on the policies now has paid for that policy well more than what it's worth. We need to talk. Yeah. I'm just and telling you right now. Nine dollars a month or whatever, and I just think I just like it's it's a robbery in itself. And, and you know, of course, you know, when I speak, speak of and ask the question, you know, like I need to pull this money and put it somewhere. Oh, well, you know, then you know, they, they make me believe that that's not possible. That is incorrect. Thank you. Um, yes, I got you. we definitely need to talk. Okay. There's a lot of things that you can do with life insurance, okay. you know. Um, one of the things that I try to teach on is exactly that. Literally last week, okay, I did this exact same thing with another group. Literally last week, we found somebody. They're paying $250 a month for a life insurance policy. They're getting about $30,000 worth of coverage. I found them with a not-for-profit life insurance company, $50,000 worth of insurance for the exact same price. So literally just gave them, gave your family 20,000. Here you go, $20,000 mama forgot about. She ain't know about it. I, I found it for it, right? $50,000. They caught up. They've had this policy for over 12 years. They got over $10,000 in cash value that they can call. The policy's already been approved. They're going to get a check for over $10,000 early next week based on the exact same thing that you're talking about, based on the fact that they've had a policy for some time and it's been building cash value. So we'll talk for sure. For sure. Yes, sir. Out of curiosity, why is it just called Prudential? Well, back in the day, Prudential used to charge black people three times more than they charge our white counterparts. Okay. Mm. But have that changed? That has changed. The regulations for insurance has changed. And that's, a, that's one of the reasons why there's a lot of misinformation in the black community because it was our parents who dealt with the slick back sales guy coming down, hey, y'all got that check. You don't know where the check going. Somebody passes away, who knows what company? It's a lot of misinformation. So that's why I, I, I mentioned them in particular. It's one of the bigger companies that, that were doing that for sure. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Hi, what about prepaid So, So, is it considered insurance? No, not really. No, not really. Um, I always recommend that you have something that has a solidified death benefit. Because one thing that we know that ain't changing is death and taxes. You know what I'm saying? It ain't going nowhere. So it doesn't matter what age you are. Insurance is an investment. If we, we spend all this money putting money into a 401k and all these stocks, 
with the intention of turning a little bit of money into a little bit more money. If I can tell you, you can turn a little bit of money into a little bit more money, but it's going to go to your family. Does that mean it loses its value? No, it just means that it's not necessarily for you. So we can definitely talk. Um, pre, Yeah, we, we, we should definitely talk. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, a lot of people will buy a plot for final expenses and things like that. Great, 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 great. People will buy, take, you know, get insurance for mortgage protection and the money, the mortgage will go down. And now they got $300,000 worth of insurance, but the mortgage is at 50,000. Great, that's 250,000 extra dollars for your family. It's a lot of things that you can do with it, but every single person has a different situation. Yes, ma'am. Of course. Are you currently still putting money into it or is it like an old currently still putting money into it? What I would say is stop the bleeding. OK, don't take your money out because once you take your money out, if you're under the age of 59 and a half, there's a 10 percent penalty. OK, so I still if you're still contributing, it, I still wouldn't take your money out because they're still going to tax you. It's called tax qualified money. I used to think tax qualified was a good thing. The tax qualified means it qualifies for them to tax you. You you're not risking anything, but you're just gonna have to pay for it. Is what I'm saying because you're still contributing into it, and we can talk deeper about it. But if you're still contributing to it, it's called tax qualified money, meaning they're going to tax you. So think, here's another here's another thing. When you talk about a 401k, 403b, TSP, IRA, all those acronyms simply means tax deferred retirement. Tax deferred means if I'm making $100,000 and I put $10,000 into my retirement, I'm telling the government, I don't make $100,000, I make $90,000. So just disregard this other 10. Don't even worry about it. It ain't none of your business, right? <laughs> However, that all sounds good until it's tax season. Because they don't want to tax you on your little $10,000. They want to tax you on your $250,000, right? It's like, well, if I'm a farmer, would I rather be taxed on my seed, right? Here, going, in, going in the back, go grab two big bags of those seeds, or my harvest. Tax deferred money is getting taxed on your harvest, on all your money. So a Roth IRA is a better way to go, but even better than the Roth, because the Roth still has the same problems as the traditional IRA. You can still lose money in the market. Well, you will still lose money in the market. 59 and a half, you're still going to get a penalty, right? Your money ain't around the market. It's literally inside the market. It's tweet worthy, right? However, in life insurance, you can have that money where you can take the money out before age 59 and a half, but without any penalties. You don't have to worry about the money going anywhere. Like I'm an entrepreneur. I don't have a company that's going to match me halfway. I wish I did. If y'all find that person to... Tell them to call me. But for now, I have I have to have my retirement money. I don't have a choice, right? So I do my things a little bit differently. We'll be able to talk through it. Um, but I do things a little bit differently than most people, but I'm also in finance. So that's why I try to come and educate us on this stuff so we can do things a little bit differently than most people. I got about two more minutes, Pastor. Any other questions? I got a question. Yes, sir. Um, I just heard you out. Out there. Uh -huh. The problem is with uh, what I say, middle class, mm -hmm. black man, mm -hmm. okay, only making so much. Why is it that uh, you with the knowledge mm -hmm. or before you, it's not, why did they come in our community and talk to us about insurance rather than the white man that took us for the money, took us for our money? Nobody's in a rush to save us except for us. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked me, um, maybe three or four months ago, you know, you and Sharp Young Brother, you know, you got these, these locks and things like that. And I said, I made a conscious decision four years ago that I'm growing my hair out. We need people that look like us to talk to us. We need to let people know that just because you got long hair, whatever, that don't mean you a thug, you're well-educated, right? But nobody's in a rush to come and talk to us about this stuff. That's why I'm so grateful to Pastor Blue for allowing me to come out and just bring value to the marketplace. Companies ship me all over the country to do this, but I live here. This is home base for me. 
ain't nothing like home base. Y'all remember back in the day when you used to play tag and then you run and you touch that base, I'm like whoo. <laughs> That's like Sundays. This is y'all home base. You know, so for him to invite me and give me the hospitality to be able to talk to you guys, his family, right? It's I can't thank you enough. But that's that's exactly why. That's exactly, please fill out a form and I'll tell you everything you need to know about and life. That, and one more question. Yes, sir. And the thing is it's just like in the black community, you know, black race, black community. Um uh, we only make so much with these corporations. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? So the thing is, some of us is living, living from paycheck to paycheck. So how can we invest in something to help us in the future? So when we only have a little bit of money. So here's the thing. The black dollar stays in the black community for an average of 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. 60 minutes. That means you go and you buy something from a black owned business. And then you go and buy something else. Or you, you go and buy something from a black owned business, and that black owned business goes and they spend that money with somebody that's not black, mm -hmm. which is fine. No hate on any culture, but for us to fix this problem that you're talking about, there's a concept called far game. And it's an old Jewish concept. And what far game means is I don't care if I can find it cheaper, I don't care if I can get it faster. I don't care if I can get it better. I do business with you. And if you mess it up, I have every right to tell you that you have messed up. You fix it, and I continue to do business with you. That's why the Jewish dollar continues to spin. We don't have that concept in our community yet. We got to have these conversations, and we got to trust each other. We got to leverage. Like, a lot of the times when we're having conversations, our arms are crossed because a lot of the times in our community, we're trying to get figure out how can we get up how can we get a one up we got to bring everybody up everybody got to have a one up right you got so many entrepreneurs that work in this church y'all should know who's who y'all should know who's who you see what i'm saying and spread that message and spread that message so that's the only fix we got to find more people like me and it, it, we got what 40 50 people in here if I'm only talking to these 40 and 50 people and you guys aren't telling anybody else, then this message has died. Okay? Mm -hmm. We have to be a river, not a dam. Information has to flow through us, not just to us. Too many times, you hit it right on the head, too many times information flows to us and we don't tell nobody else about it. But in other cultures, oh, you heard, you said what? Oh, you got to talk to my boy. You said, oh, you got to talk to my girl. That's how it has to be for us to get to the next level. Any other last questions? All right, again, please, 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 I encourage everybody to fill out the form. It's only going to be me calling you. I ain't going to be bothering y'all, okay? Look, I'm just trying to help. That's what I'm here for. Pastor Blue, I can't thank you enough. I can't thank you enough. Thank you. I do hope that uh, everybody, I hope everybody gains up. Matter of fact, how, how many people gains up? My, my, my. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, I, I think I told you, I, I might can pat myself on the back a little bit. I told you this would be informative and for each of you, right, individually. So I pray that we do just that. Don't become a dam, but we become a river in this process. Fill out that information. He will contact you back personally. He won't bug you, but it's going to be helpful to your life. Amen? Amen. 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 So we thank you so much. Uh, let, let's go and get, uh, get our, our second piece of revival uh, in, in, in this word and in this fellowship. I'm excited. The choir was singing. She felt like Sunday morning yesterday. Amen. I'm <laughs> <laughs>